I think it was an accident really because I decided I was going to be a synthetic organic chemist and I went to ask one of the professors for a project for my final year and he said no. So the next day I bumped into Ray Freeman and I asked him for a project and he said yes. So the rest is history. So I would have been an organic chemist. So I think the first experiment was to switch on the spectrometer, which was an iron magnet one, and try and shim it uh, to get some good results. Uh, and by a complete fluke, after about 10 minutes, it was perfect. And I showed Gareth Morris the spectrum, and it's the only time I've ever seen him surprised by anything I did. <laughs> so I think of the ones that we did the one that's the favorite is the the zero quantum suppression experiment I did with Michael Thribbleton uh, because this was something we've been trying to do for so long and it seems like and so far it looks like it's a very good solution so we were very proud of this because it had a very long gen genesis So I'm working on some uh, more general chemistry books at the moment, but I have been thinking about uh, whether there would be a chance to make another NMR book. Um, maybe something a bit more theoretical, but uh, I think it might be a retirement project, actually. It's so very tricky. I think, I think you need to Obviously you need to be interested in it, you need to be passionate, you need to work hard um, and you need to think carefully about things. And I think in particular it's important not just to follow the trends. Um, the problem is these days is you kind of get forced to follow the trends because that's where the money is. Uh, so I think it's very difficult these days to, be, to, to follow a successful scientific career because it's, it's much more about promoting yourself and sometimes it is about the quality of the science, I regret to say. So obviously Ray Freeman was a huge influence. The way he uh, talked to us, the way he thought about experiments and so on was something that stayed with me. Uh, and in particular, that Ray always had this thing that, that, that being able to get other people to understand what you were doing, to be clear, was very important. And I think that's really stayed with me uh, as, as, as the kind of leading. Uh. Well, because I always advise them to work hard, uh, always to back up their data. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know, and to, you need to think about things, you know, you mustn't shy away from thinking about things that are difficult or, or thinking about other options and so on. It's uh, You've got to really engage with it. Research isn't a, it's not a job, it's a, it's a vocation. It's something you have to really, uh, really engage with wholeheartedly. Ah, well, of course I have very little time because I'm such a busy person. Uh, but the thing that I like doing rather oddly um, is just to go running, just for recreation, not very fast. I find it very relaxing and that's uh, it's my favourite thing to do when I've got the time. Oh yes, yes. Well, I think if I had to do something academic, uh, I would probably uh, probably be a writing project. Um, and the thing I'd really like to do is spend some time getting myself up to speed with producing really good online resources, things with animations and so on. If I didn't have to do anything academic, I think it probably would be some travelling in mountainous areas because I've not had a chance to do that for a long while. And being in a place like this, you realise that the mountains are fantastic and I'd like to have some time to really enjoy that. You know, it's very hard to predict the future. You know, you don't see things coming. I mean, if you could see things coming, you know, you'd make a lot of money. Um, but I think the thing is that it's always been in NMR and I think it remains the same. It's the, the technology and the theory and the applications, they just feed on one another all the while. 
you know, you get someone who wants to do something new, then some enabling technology comes along, and then suddenly you can do it, and then people think, well, if we can do that, we can do something else. Um, and it really, uh, I think that's what's, that's always been the way it is, and I think that's going to continue. There doesn't seem to be, you know, there doesn't seem to be any limit. It's, it's amazing. People have predicted the demise of NMR for years, but it's not true. It's never happened. I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, it's just very hard to say. Um, I, th I think one of the things which, you know, it's, it's perhaps a small thing, but what has really made a big difference is, you know, suddenly the ability to look at really very small amounts of material. And I think we forget, you know, the days when you used to have a few grams of something before you could even think about doing something uh, clever with it. And now you can do something on tiny amounts of material that would have been unthinkable years ago. And I think this has actually made a huge difference. Uh, it's a small thing, but again, it's one of those things where the technology has really pushed the subject along. Oh, yes, it's very hard to predict the future, I'm afraid. Um, and I, I would really say I have no idea. I think probably at the end of the day. Oh, that's just quite difficult. I mean, obviously there are people you you, you don't know them, um, so you know you, they can only uh, inspire you in a in, in a particular way. Um, in the NMR world, um, I just remember meeting uh, the very first NMR meeting I went to, meeting uh, Jean Genet, and again this was just something. Uh, I don't know whether you call it inspiration, but it was just something very special. And also some years later. Um, I met Dorothy Hodgkin, who was uh, one of the pioneers of crystallography. I know that's a word we're not allowed to say in an NMR meeting. But again, just to actually sort of meet this person and, and talk to her and, and uh, just to be in the presence. I mean, this is sort of general, it's, it's inspiring in a sort of very general way, rather than for anything particular that they said or did.